Hey guys, happy Friday. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to talk about temptation. And we all face that as believers. No one gets away from it, but there are weapons and there are tools that the Lord has given us to deal with the things that so easily can beset us if we don't give them to the Lord. So today we will be working from 2 Samuel and I want to read to you verse 1 through 6. So here we go, 2 Samuel chapter 13. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amon, Ammonon, I'm sorry, the son of David, loved her. And Ammonon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin, and Ammonon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Ammonon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemi, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Ammonon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick, and when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Ammonon lay down and made himself sick, and when the king was come to see him, Ammonon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. We see that Ammonon is faced with the temptations of his heart. The scriptures say he was vexed for his sister, but he found it hard to do. And it could be that because his conscience and him knowing the ways of God, that the Bible said it found it him hard to do this thing. But Jonadab, his friend encouraged him to do what was in his heart. You see, we see in this scripture Jonadab playing the role of the serpent. Oftentimes, there are people closest to you who will allow the enemy to use them because in their own lives, they have open doors. And so you see Jonadab being as crafty as the serpent. You see Jonadab in the scriptures, they say he was a very subtle man. So he put the thoughts and the actions into what was already in Ammonon's heart. And we see within these scriptures that Ammonon will fulfill the temptations, that the desires, that the serpent, that Jonadab has convicted him of. You see, this is why it's so important that you are praying without ceasing. That is why it's so important that every day we ask the Lord to examine our hearts, to renew in us a right spirit, to cleanse us, to purify us, so that we don't fall into the temptation of sin. And we all face that, whether it's greed, whether it's lust, whether it is pride, whether it's self-exaltation, whether it's fake humility. There's so many things that can easily beset us if we don't allow the Lord to purify and cleanse us. And we see again that it is very important that the friends, the people that you choose to be around you are godly people because we see Jonadab plant a seed and the seed of sin came to fruition because Anamon do, does exactly what the plot of the enemy. He goes for it. He takes the bait. And he performs this wicked act. And as you read the scriptures of chapter 13, you will see that he fulfills it, his desires. And we know that there is a cost to sin. Sin, the Bible tells us, the wages of sin are death. There are consequences. And we see that all throughout the Bible, when we act in our own desires, when we act off of our own will, it can lead us into terrible, terrible places. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, 
Jesus modeled for us exactly what we needed to pray every day. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He knew that we would face so many things in this world. He knew we would face the temptations of the enemy. He knew we would deal with the flesh, and the flesh has all kinds of wicked desires that it wants to fulfill. But as we walk with the Christ, as we allow his word, the water, to spiritually cleanse us, he renews our mind. He gives us a new mind. He gives us a new spirit. He cleanses us. And the Holy Spirit is able to direct our path. But we have to allow the Lord to do this every single day. We have to examine ourselves. And so the Lord wanted me to talk about temptation today. Whatever temptation you might be facing, the Lord says, is anything too hard for him? Give it to him. Confess it out of your mouth and ask the Holy Spirit to give you the strength to overcome it. We have to pray against temptation every single day. The Lord knows our steps before we make them. He's omnipotent. Omnipotent, I'm sorry. Omniscient. Omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. There is he's not wrapped in time. He's everywhere. So he knows the beginning from the end and that's why it's so important that we include him in our day. You know, we start him off with our day, our morning, and we take the time to set time aside every day just to pray before we get our day started. And I'm not talking about a two or five minute prayer and we're done. I mean, intentional time to get in the presence of the Lord. You know, every day you need to put on the full armor of God. You have to pray that on. No one can pray that on for you. There are steps that as believers we have to take. We have to do things, you know. We can't just sit by idly. The Lord teaches us what to do. And then it's important that we apply what he shows us. That we put on the armor for battle so that we can be successful. So that we're not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. You have to know what you're up against and you have to be prayerful about that or else you can fall into temptation as Ammonon did because he did not check his heart. He did not allow the Lord to cleanse his heart. And the Bible says he was sick. He was vexed. And um, sadly, the enemy, you know, can use anybody. And in this case, he used the closest person to him, his cousin, Jonadab. And Jonadab planted a seed that manifested into full sin. And um, it's very powerful. So when you get a moment, just go back and read chapters, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 13. Now I want to move from there. And I want to talk about our faith and how important it is that we walk by faith. I've been saying that, you know, all week that it's important that we keep and set our eyes on Jesus so that we don't fall into despair. And um, it's just so important that we have the faith that can move mountains. The Lord gives us all the tools we need, but we have to ask him to help us to have the strength to walk in what he has planned for us. And he is so faithful that he will do it. So, you know, don't get caught up in your fear. Don't get caught up in your despair because when you do that, you're actually letting the enemy plant seeds of fear. And we know that fear and faith cannot uh, subside in the same area. Faith and fear cannot be in the same zone. We as children of God have to walk by faith and not fear. So when the enemy can plant seeds of fear in you to contradict what God has told you, then you allow him to get a foothold in your life. And we know that the Lord says he who keeps his mind on him will be in perfect peace. But you have to keep your mind on things that are pure. You have to watch things that are positive. You have to keep your mind on things that are good and righteous. The Lord told you those things for a reason because he didn't want you to have your joy taken. He did not want you to uh, have fear planted in your heart. He did not want you to walk around with doubt. And when you allow all of these other reports like Fox News, CNN, and all these other worldly systems to plant seeds in you, you've made a choice who you will serve. And the Bible says we cannot serve two masters. You will either love one or hate the other. 
So you have to decide whose report you will believe. Will you believe the report of the Lord? I've been saying that all season. Will you believe the report of the Lord? Because we know when we have belief and no doubt, we can move mountains. I want to talk to you. You know, when Moses and the Israelites were about to cross the Red Sea, do you think they didn't have fear? Do you think that they didn't feel despair at that moment when they were at a sea and the Egyptians were chasing them? Of course. But Moses said, fear not, be still and stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Moses, his faith and his trust and his hope in the Lord did not dissipate. And we have to be that way. When we come to our Red Sea, when it looks like there is no way out, we have to keep our hope and our trust in him. And Moses said a powerful thing when he said, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes you just got to pray and you got to stand still because you've done everything you can. And you just got to wait with expectancy. And when that Red Sea parts in your life, you have to be ready to take action. They could have let fear keep them from moving across those the land because there was a wall of water on each side you don't think that was scary but instead they had to take the faith to get to the promised land they had to have action they had to do something you're going to have to do something to get your promise to get to the promised land you have to be willing and able to walk it out walk your faith out that's what happens so many believers get to the red sea they see the doubt they see what can't happen. They see all the impossibilities. And once that seed of fear is planted into their heart, they become stifled. They become their own stumbling blocks. And the enemy has gotten a foothold. Do not let the enemy keep you from your promised land because you don't have the faith to walk. You don't have the faith to go across your Red Sea. Even though the walls of water are all about you. You've got to take action. And I love that because Moses said, the Egyptians you see now, look, because you will never, ever see them again. And they walked across that Red Sea to their promised land. You have to have that faith, my friends. Faith is not something that's so easy. But when you ask the Lord to increase your faith, he'll do that. It can be challenging to walk across that Red Sea when you see everything coming against you, when you see the Egyptians following after you, chasing after you. But stand and see the salvation of the Lord. And I hope that gives someone hope. I hope that gives someone um, the desire, the inspiration to keep moving ahead in this season because we have to get in position. There is something that you have to do in order to get to your promised land. You have to take action. So I pray that you will take action this day and you won't just sit by. You won't just sit idly, but you will have the faith that allows us to move mountains. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for this time together, Lord, that we can just look and marinate and study your word and see what it is that it is that you're saying to us and how we should walk and how we should apply the principles from long ago, from the ancient times, and how they are good for us this day. There is nothing new under the sun, Lord. You have given us your word so that it could be a lamp upon our feet and a light upon our path and i thank you for that lord because you've given us so many examples so that we can walk by faith and i thank you lord and i just pray like elijah said that you would open up the people's eyes open up your children's eyes so that we can see that there are more with us than that than that are against us you know, when the servants, when, when he opened his eyes, he saw that there were horses of chariots all around Elijah. Lord, I pray, I pray that you just open our eyes so that we can walk in faith, the kind of faith that moves mountains, the kind of faith that has no doubt, the kind of faith that allows us to walk across the Red Sea to our promised land. 
Lord, let it be so for us. Lord, bless everyone who's watching this video, Lord. I pray that you will increase our faith for those who are struggling in this moment with fear, for those who are struggling with doubt, despair, lack of hope, lack of joy. Lord, I pray that you would give them the garment of praise in exchange for their heaviness. Give them beauty for ashes, Father. Have them to fulfill their purposes, Lord. Let them not look at their own inadequacies, but let them look at you, Father, who is able to equip us to do the work that you've called us to do. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Spirit. Come in. We invite you into our lives. Fill us afresh. Fill us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord. We want more of you, Holy Ghost. Let us know who you are. Let us take the time to receive you in our lives. You know, some of us, we, we make ourselves so busy with things that will not be lasting. They will not leave a legacy. But you, Lord, when we do and work what you have called us to do, Lord, you say you make a name for us. You give us a legacy in Christ that is lasting. All of this other stuff is foolishness. But those who put their trust in you, those who seek the kingdom first, you will not allow us to be put to shame, Lord. And I honor you, I magnify you, I glorify you. Thank you for your precious spirit. Holy Spirit, come be with us. Come be with your children. Pour your spirit out like we've never, ever seen before. I'm waiting in expectancy. I know you're here. I see the fire. Lord, open the eyes of your people. I thank you, I glorify you, I magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord is here. As I was praying, I saw the fire of the Holy Spirit. You all, just be blessed. Know that God is with you no matter what your situation looks like. Give God faith. Give him, the, give him room to prove himself. You know, I want you to continue. Those of you who have not started praying the Jabaz prayer, please join me. We have been praying that prayer every day of June, and it has been such a blessing and a testimony each day that I can share with my children. We look back and we reflect, you know, how has the Lord enlarged our territory? How has he blessed the work of our hands? And it's amazing to have these conversations with my children, um, and I just, and my husband, and I just pray that you join us for that challenge. You know, Jabez said in his prayer, Lord, keep me from evil. Keep me from causing pain. Because he realized that sin, if we're not careful, it can wreck and destroy everything that God has intended for us. So I thought, you know, wow, that is so powerful. And that does link up into the whole thing that the Lord wanted me to talk to you all about in my self-temptation. And how important it is that we pray. We're prayerful about asking the Lord to guard us from temptation. Asking the Lord to give us eyes to see. So that we don't fall. We don't fall for the bait. So you all have a blessed day. Remember to pray that Jabaz prayer every day. Um, it's 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 I believe. So you all take care. Have a blessed day. I love you. Stay encouraged. Stay hopeful. Allow the Lord to fill you with his joy. Remember the strength of the, the Lord. Strength. The, I'm sorry. I can't even talk. The joy. The strength of the Lord. It belongs to him. It's supernatural. You don't have to try to, to uh, come up with it yourself. Just ask the Lord to give it to you. So you all be blessed and have a wonderful day. I love you. Bye.